Welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So today we're doing another video, the 25th video in Electrons and Atoms. Bam! So today we're going to be talking about Hun's Rule. So in order to do Hun's Rule, I need you to pull out a periodic table. And we're going to be looking at um, the first, let's say, 10 elements. So um, we're going to be doing the electron configuration and orbital box diagram of the first 10 elements to apply Hun's Rule. Okay, so here we go. So this is our definition of Hund's rule. The most stable arrangement of electrons in subshells is the one with the maximum number of parallel spins. That's called a maximum multiplicity. That is, every orbital in the same subshell is first singly occupied by electrons before they pair or couple. Okay, this also explains that electron-electron repulsion is not lower in energy. I'll show you an example of that. Hun's rule is applied without violating the Pauli exclusion principle that we have discussed already before. So that's very critical. Okay, so boron. So we're going to take a look at boron here, and that's a Z of 5. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to write out the electron configuration for boron. So, 1s1, 1s2, 2s1, 2s2, and you combine that all together, and then it is going to be 2p1. So, 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. That's how that is read. Now we're going to write the appropriate number of boxes for each of these. We've already done um, hydrogen's electron configuration and or corresponding orbital box. We've already done helium's electron configuration and corresponding orbital box. So now we're expanding on two things that are a little bit larger than that. So here are the appropriate boxes. So we've already done the 1s boxes before, and now we have a 2s and also 2p boxes. Notice that I've labeled the boxes and I've connected the boxes as is appropriate or not connected them as is appropriate as well. And let me describe that a little bit more. So when n is equal to 2, what are the possible L values for n of equal to 2? Remember, um, the L values are all the way up to n minus 1. So 0 up to n minus 1. So that is the possible L values when n is equal to 2 is 0 and 1. When L is 0, that's an S-type orbital. When L is 1, that's a P-type orbital. Okay, so we're going to apply a rule that we actually learned earlier here, and that is 2L plus 1, that tells you the number of boxes or orbitals in which you are drawing, okay, and that is 1. So that's why we are drawing a single box for any S-type orbital, and that single box is unto itself, but it's by itself, it's not attached to any other. If we apply that 2L plus 1 rule to a P-type orbital, then we have a... The 2L plus 1 rule gives us 3. So why are there 3 boxes with p-type orbitals? Because 2L plus 1 is equal to 3. So now you should see why there are 3 orbitals, 3 boxes attached to one another for any p-type orbital. Okay, so now we have the boxes appropriately labeled. Now what we're going to do is write out the electrons as arrows in those boxes. So remember the rule that we used before with helium and with hydrogen, actually, and that is the first arrow is always up. You're always going to think in a positive or optimistic way first. That is an up arrow. That is a positive spin. That is a clockwise spin, and you're going to heaven first, and that's why it's up. So that's why that first arrow is up. Now the second arrow is going to be in that same orbital because we need to fill up that energy level first and then it must be an anti-parallel spin or opposite in spin, so that's why it's a down arrow. That arrow that we just did was a negative one half as far as the m sub s value. We've labeled that already before. This is the electron configuration orbital box diagram, if you will, of helium. We've already done that. So I'm going to add now into the 2s orbital. The first electron must be of the same spin that you started off with in this whole process, which is an upwards facing spin. Okay, That is actually the orbital box diagram of lithium. Okay, Now I'm going to pair it, but it must be anti-parallel. So this is the orbital box diagram of beryllium. 
Okay, I'm just looking at my periodic table here because that has an N of 4. Now, the next electron is going to go in the next box, and that is the first of the boxes of the 2p orbitals, and that is right there. Okay, notice that my spins are anti-parallel within the orbital. The first arrow is always up, the second arrow is always down. That's by convention. Okay, and we are putting the arrows in the boxes as they go in a line. Okay, so let's keep on going because we haven't really applied Hund's rule yet at this moment in time. Okay, this is going to be paramagnetic, that is attracted to um, an electric field, okay, because there is at least one unpaired electron. So that's that one unpaired electron in the 2p orbital is paramagnetic. So is boron paramagnetic? Absolutely yes. Okay, so let's do carbon, which is one atomic number beyond boron. So we're going to write out the electron configuration for carbon first, um, and that's 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Now we're going to write the appropriate number of boxes, just like we did with the boron. Okay, you should follow the rules that we did before, the 2l plus 1 rule, and we have labeled the boxes as is appropriate. We're going to place those electrons in these orbital boxes as is appropriate in the correct order. That is the first arrow up, second arrow is paired anti-parallel. And, and notice that we have only put in a maximum of two electrons per orbital. Okay, first arrow up, second arrow down. First arrow up, okay, now the question is where do I place the next electron? So there's the quandary. Do I place it as a negative one-half spin right here in this same box, or do I place it in the next box, or in the next box they're over? So let's find out what this is going to be. It is going to be most certainly in the next box. So this is following Hun's rule, and Hun's rule is saying that we have the maximum multiplicity, the maximum number of parallel spins in opposite bo in different boxes, okay? This is also paramagnetic because there are two unpaired electrons. This is attracted to a magnetic field. Okay, let's keep on going. We're going to keep on going through the periodic table. We're going to nitrogen. One more atomic number. So we're going to write out the electron configuration for nitrogen. Hopefully you can do that by yourself. That's 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. We're going to write out the appropriate number of boxes as we have done before using the 2L plus 1 rule. Okay, and now we're going to place those electrons in those boxes in the correct order. So, the first arrow is up, second arrow anti-parallel. First arrow up, second arrow anti-parallel. First arrow up, second arrow up. Now the question is, where do I place the next electron? Do I pair it with this one here? Um, that is an electron-electron repulsion, and that does not work at all, okay? I could have shown you that with the carbon, but we didn't, okay? I'm just showing you an example of electron-electron repulsion, okay? This does not work because I first need to fill in that last box with the same parallel spin. This is following Hun's rule, having a parallel spin. So I'm going to wipe this away get rid of this, and now we're going to have that electron right here. So now I have half filled all the orbitals appropriately with the same parallel spin. This is also paramagnetic, and this is the maximum multiplicity. That is the greatest number of parallel spins in the same type of orbital, same energy level, same energy level of n of 2, same type of orbital, that is a p-type orbital. I have half filled all the orbitals. Okay, we're still not done. We're going to keep on going so that you understand how we continue this. So we're going to keep on going here. And we're going to do the next element, and that is oxygen. Oxygen is one more atomic number beyond nitrogen that we just did. We're going to write out the electron configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. We're going to write out the appropriate number of boxes and label them just like we did before. First arrow up, second arrow down. First arrow up, second arrow down. Okay, and first arrow up. Next arrow is in the next box, same spin. Next arrow, last box, same spin. Okay, now the question is where do I place the next arrow? The next arrow needs to be in, I'm going to go back and start backfilling, but opposite spin. So that's why it's going to go right there. 
And I had mentioned in the previous lecture, I was hoping that you would draw out the electron configuration and orbital box diagram of oxygen. And there was that oxygen, that liquid oxygen hanging there in between the two magnets. And that is, it is paramagnetic. Since it is paramagnetic, oxygen is paramagnetic because there's at least one, in this case, there are two unpaired electrons in oxygen. Therefore, it's paramagnetic, i.e. attracted to a magnetic field. Okay, let's do the next element, and that's fluorine one more. So write out the electron configuration for fluorine, and that is 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. We're going to write out the boxes as appropriate, and then we're going to start putting these in here as far as electrons. Up, down, up, down, up, 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 down, down. And now we're done. Is this paramagnetic? It absolutely is paramagnetic because I have one electron in that last box there that is paramagnetic. That is an unpaired electron. It's attracted to a magnetic field. Okay? And I said we're going to go all the way down across this period here. So the next element here is neon, and that is N of uh, a Z of 10, right? Okay. All right. Fantastic. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Okay, we got the boxes, we got an up, we got a down, we got an up, we got a down, we got an up, we got an up, we got an up, we got a down, down, and down. And now they are all paired. You should see that this is diamagnetic. Okay, this is not attracted to a magnetic field. So neon, the noble gas of neon, is not attracted to a magnetic field. Why? Because it's diamagnetic. Why? Because all the electrons are paired. That's why it's diamagnetic. Okay, so the second noble gas, neon, it has a completely filled outer shell and all the electrons are paired. Therefore, it's diamagnetic and not attracted to a magnet as experiments verify this. Okay, hopefully you can understand po uh, poly exclusion principle from before and Hun's rule. Hun's rule is not violating poly exclusion principle. Hun's rule is dealing with where you place those electrons. We need maximum multiplicity first it's the same number of parallel spins in different orbitals before we start pairing electrons. That was another video, um, and here's another hat. Um, I remember uh, one of my great, great uncles, he was in World War II, and he went to Africa to fight, and he actually wore a hat like this one, except his was real and mine is not. Give me a thumbs up if you liked that video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I will see you next time for more chemistry. Bye now.